Good morning and welcome to our service from the Presbyterian Church in the Watton on Sunday the 25th of September. As you can see, I'm all alone today, so just an online service. And we're going to be continuing with our theme that we had last week, uh, last time, uh, the theme of hope and hopefulness. A few announcements, first of all. Next Sunday, the 2nd of October, there will be a service here in the church, bilingual communion service, which I will lead. 11 o'clock, all welcome. Our big event that's coming up is the grand reopening of the schoolroom after all the renovations and repairs being done. So on the Wednesday, the 28th of October at 3 p.m., there's going to be an afternoon tea to celebrate the reopening of the schoolroom and also to think about the Seat of Hope uh, Christian Aid Appeal and the donations will go towards that appeal. Um, I won't give any more announcements at the moment, uh, but those are just the announcements for today. So, as we come to worship God, you in your various homes, watching this on your phones or your computer, me here in the church, in a virtual sense we gather. We gather to worship God and the Lord is with us wherever we are. At all times we cannot escape his presence. Lord, help us to worship you now, to rejoice in the hope that you provide, the eternal hope the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Thank you, Lord. Accept our worship now. May our hearts and our minds be cleansed from sin. And may our words and our thoughts be acceptable to you through Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We're going to uh, start with an old hymn, a version of the psalm. Um, and this hymn goes way back to, well, John, Mil John Milton actually wrote the words of this, although we're singing a slightly modernised version of the words. If you've got junior praise at home there, it's number 154 in junior praise. Let us, with a gladsome mind, praise the Lord, for he is kind. For his mercies still endure, ever faithful, ever sure. Let us, with a that's a mind praise the lord for he is kind for his mercies still endure ever faithful ever sure he with all commanding might fill the new made world with light for his mercies they endure, ever faithful, ever sure. All things living he does feed, his full hand supplies their need. For his mercies still endure, ever faithful, ever sure. Let us then with gladsome mind praise the Lord 
Lord, he is kind, for his mercies still endure, ever faithful, ever sure. Let me apologise for my voice. Uh, it's a bit hoarse this time in the morning. <clears throat> Now, as I said earlier, hope and hopefulness is our theme. And I'm going to read a fairly long reading from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 32. Now, the background to this is that the city of Jerusalem was surrounded by enemies. King Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians were besieging the city. They were in, in control of all the lands around the city of Jerusalem. All the fields and all the farms were in the control of the enemy. And it's while in this situation, while he's stuck there in the city, besieged by the Babylonians, that God tells Jeremiah to buy a field out there beyond where the enemy have already captured it, to buy a field, to redeem a field belonging to his family from one of his relatives, and they were only too glad to sell him that field because it was useless, it was in enemy hands. But Jeremiah bought the field and sealed up the documents in a, a clay jar that they would keep for the time when he believed he hoped, he knew that God would release his people from the Babylonian captivity and they would return to their land and once again fields and lands would be bought and sold in Judah. So that's a bit of a long explanation. Jeremiah buys a field. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. In the tenth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, the army of the king of Babylon was then besieging Jerusalem. And Jeremiah the prophet was confined in the courtyard of the guard in the royal palace of Judah. Now Zedekiah, king of Judah had imprisoned him there, saying, Why do you prophesy as you do? You say, This is what the Lord says. I am about to hand this city over to the king of Babylon, and he will capture it. Zedekiah, king of Judah, will not escape out of the hands of the Babylonians, will, but will certainly be handed over to the king of Babylon, and will speak with him face to face and see him with his own eyes. He will take Zedekiah to Babylon, where he will remain until I deal with him, declares the Lord. If you fight against the Babylonians, you will not succeed. Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came to me. Hanamel, son of Shalom, your uncle, is going to come to you and say, by my field at Anathoth, because as nearest relative, it is your right and duty to buy it. Then, just as the Lord had said, my cousin Hanamel came to me in the courtyard of the guard and said, Buy my field at Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin, since it is your right to redeem it and possess it, buy it for yourself. I knew that this was the word of the Lord. So I bought the field at Anathoth from my cousin Hanamel and weighed out for him 17 shekels of silver. I signed and sealed the deed, had it witnessed and weighed out the silver on the scales. I took the deed of purchase 
the sealed copy containing the terms and conditions, as well as the unsealed copy. And I gave this deed to Barak, son of Neriah, the son of Marseilleh, in the presence of my cousin Hanamel, and of the witnesses who had signed the deeds, and all the Jews sitting in the courtyard of the guard. In their presence I gave Baruch these instructions. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Take these documents, both the sealed and unsealed copies of the deeds of purchase, and put them in a clay jar so that they will last a long time. For this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Houses, fields, and vineyards will again be bought in this land. Here ends the reading. We're going to sing. Uh, it is actually 191 in Junior Praise, if you have a copy of Junior Praise. Our eyes have seen the glory of our Saviour Christ the Lord. He is seated at his father's side in love and full accord. From there upon the sons of man, his spirit is outpoured. All hail, ascended king. It's a song that celebrates the victory of Christ and our great eternal hope in him and the tune is the battle hymn of the republic so we all know it very well our eyes have seen the glory of our saviour christ the lord he is seated at his father's side in love and full accord from there upon the sons of men, his spirit is outpoured. All hail, ascended King. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, <coughs> glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. All hail, ascended King. He came to earth at Christmas and was made a man like us. He taught, he healed, he suffered, and they nailed him to a cross. He rose again on Easter day, our Lord victorious. All hail, ascended King. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Ascended King The good news of his kingdom Must be preached to every shore The news of peace and pardon And the end of strife and war The secret of his kingdom Is to serve him evermore All hail Ascended King Glory, glory, hallelujah Glory, glory, hallelujah Ascended King His kingdom is a family Of folk of every race They live their lives in harmony Enabled by his grace They follow his example Till they see him face to face All hail Ascended King Glory, glory, hallelujah Glory, glory, hallelujah Ascended King. (coughs) 
Just a few words of reflection now. We think about Jeremiah. He was in prison because he was unpopular with King Zedekiah because he had foretold that the Babylonians would not only come but would conquer and would take the city. Of course, that was not a popular message, but it's what God told him to say, and it was going to happen. So Jeremiah was regarded as a bit of a bit of a traitor, because he was saying the enemy were going to have victory. So he was kept locked up in the prison guard in Jerusalem. And while he was there, he had a message coming to him from God. However, God spoke to him, I don't know, but God spoke to him saying, Jeremiah, I want you to buy a field that belongs to your family. Buy it from your cousin. Redeem it so it be your property. A field in Anathoth, out in the territory of Benjamin. A place that was already in the hands of the Babylonians. Buy that land. Pay the money for it. Make it all properly legal as a sign of hope and then not long after Jeremiah had had this word from the Lord who should come to him but his cousin asking if Jeremiah would buy the land presumably the cousin thought let's get this off my hands this useless bit of land it's in the hands of the enemy I can't do anything with it Maybe I can persuade, persuade Jeremiah, he's perhaps a bit uh, soft in the head, I can persuade him to give me good money for it. And so he did. Jeremiah did give him 17 shekels of silver for the land. It was all weighed out. It was signed, it was witnessed, it was all legal. And the documents were put safe in an earthenware jar where they would keep for for generations and uh, they must have thought Jeremiah was mad what a waste of money buying a useless bit of land that's already in the hands of the enemy and especially since Jeremiah had predicted that the Babylonians were going to be victorious it seemed even more ridiculous but Jeremiah had hope for the future God had inspired him with a hope. Yes, it may be now that land is in the hands of the enemies and they're going to destroy Jerusalem and they're going to take us off into exile. But I'm looking forward to the time when God will restore us and bring us back from exile and once again Fields and lands and vineyards will be bought and sold in the land of Anathoth. I am investing in the future, as it were, Jeremiah could have said to them. It was a prophetic action that they might see that although the situation was desperate, it was not hopeless. There would come eventually a time of restoration. Now, Jeremiah was a man of incredible faith and incredible hope for the future and belief that God was in charge. And we need to be people like that nowadays. We live in this world of change and turmoil, suffering, injustice, crisis, global crisis, national crisis, economic crisis, all kinds of problems and difficulties. We need to have hope for the future. And Jesus gives us that hope. He does promise that when this world is finished, there will be a new world, a heavenly kingdom, in which everything will be right and all wrongs will be put right. But it's not just hope for the life to come. He gives us hope in this life too. Because we go through our earthly journey trusting in God day by day. 
And whatever happens, he gives us the strength to endure and to be victorious in situations. We come now to our time of prayer. Let us pray. We bless and praise you, Lord. You give the increase to our sowing, to our work, to our planting. You are the giver of life and life in abundance. We put our faith and our trust in your goodness, Lord. And when we have sown, when we have planted the seed, we trust the increase to you. We trust you, Lord, for the future in the midst of all the crises which surround us. Although our faith is often small, it is faith in a mighty God. We give thanks to you, Lord, for all those who have taught us the faith, who sowed the seed of the gospel in our hearts, and we ask your blessing upon all preachers and teachers and ministers of the word and the sacrament. We think of families and homes where the word of God is sown in the hearts of children, who are given the chance to grow in the kingdom. We pray for the work of the Bible Society and other organizations distributing your word physically, through actual books, and also electronically, online, and by means of radio broadcasts to every nation in the world. Lord our God, your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. We long for the time, Lord, when the kingdoms of the world will become the kingdoms of Christ our Lord. And we pray that the rulers on earth may reflect the gentle and loving rule of your kingdom in heaven. We pray for Charles, our new king. We pray for our prime minister and government. We pray, Lord, that they might seek the welfare of all and seek to do your will. And we pray, Lord, for all who are striving to do your will. Think particularly of Christians in Parliament or in positions of authority and all who strive to do your will in their places of work and in their homes and all who witness to you by their way of life. May your blessing be upon them all. Lord our God, your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. We give thanks to you, Lord, for those who love us, our families and our close friends. Those who show us through their lives, a glimpse of your kingdom. We ask your blessing, Lord, upon our families and our loved ones. And we remember all who are suffering violence or neglect in their homes. All who feel uncared for or unwanted. All who are lonely. And for those children who have been taken into care, we pray for families struggling with the cost of living crisis, struggling to feed their children or to heat their houses. We pray that help will come. Lord our God, your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. We give thanks for the work of healing, Lord, 
in our hospitals and through the healing professions. We pray for all engaged in, in healing and caring within our society, within our community. They're under stress. We pray that you will sustain and help them to overcome the backlog of work that needs to be done. We pray, Lord, that the pandemic will come to an end. We pray that we might be able to keep on top of it in this country and keep numbers of cases down. We pray for those parts of the world where there is very little help and little care, where COVID-19 still rages and other diseases such as Ebola, where problems seem to overwhelm those who are seeking to help, or where there is corruption in government that prevents aid coming through. And we pray for people caught up in disasters, the people of Pakistan suffering the consequences of the extreme flooding of recent weeks and the illnesses. Those who suffer drought in East Africa, those who are living in the midst of war in Ukraine, Yemen, Ethiopia, and other countries. Pray for relief agencies such as Christian Aid, for all who contribute to them. And we pray for the success of the Seeds of Hope appeal to help those in Kenya affected most by climate change. Lord our God, your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. We give thanks, Lord, for all your saints, all your holy people, all who spread the word of God, all who witness to your love, all those who initially brought the gospel to our land. And we offer you our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're going to finish by singing 158 in junior praise, if you have got a junior praise. I'll, I'll see if I can put the, the words of these hymns up on Facebook, actually. Um, 157, Lord of all hopefulness. What is hopefulness? Well, to be full of hope is to be hopeful. So I suppose hopefulness is, is more than just hope. It's hopefulness. It's abundance of hope. Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, whose trust ever childlike no cares could destroy. Be there at our waking and give us, we pray, your peace in our hearts, Lord, at the break of the day. Lord. 
Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, whose trust ever childlike no cares could destroy. Be there at our waking, and give us, we pray, your peace in our heart, Lord, at the break of the day. Lord of all eagerness, Lord of all faith, whose strong hands were skilled at the plain and the lathe, be there in our labours and give us, we pray, your strength in our hearts, Lord, at the noon of the day. Lord of all kindliness, Lord of all grace, your hand swift to welcome, your arms to embrace. Be there at our homing, and give us, we pray, your love in our hearts, Lord, at the eve of the day. Lord of all gentleness, Lord of all calm, whose voice is contentment, whose presence is balm, be there at our sleeping and give us, we pray, your peace in our heart, Lord, at the end of the day. And now may grace, mercy and peace from God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us forevermore. Amen. Thank you for watching and joining in with me as we worship today. God bless you all. Until next time. <laughs>